My main research topics um, is a seabed. I'm actually a little bit obsessed with the seabed. <laughs> it's a storyteller. It tells us what's happened in the past, but it also tells what will happen in the future. And it's just this, this beautiful environment from which we can understand so many important processes on Earth. And so I, I really do study those seabed dynamics and, and what they can tell us about the, the, the larger processes, yeah. I didn't know I was going to be an Antarctic adventurer, actually, at an early age, no. Um, it just came upon me, I think, as so many opportunities do. You have wonderful networks, you, you work with people and they suddenly give you a ring. Hey, do you want to come to Antarctica with us? And I did have to think a little bit, but not too long. And I said yes, and, and off I went. During this trip, we were collecting lots of data in front of the glaciers to study how they were retreating, but also how this new seabed is supporting life. And the physical oceanographers on board, they were studying the movement of the water and how that then brings in the nutrients. Whilst marine geologists, like myself, uh, we were looking at the, the shape of the seabed, but also at the sediment grains as they were coming from underneath the ice, because that supports life as well. And the marine biologists, they were studying how these animals were actually racing each other to colonise this new bed as, as it forms. So it, it was all proper cross-disciplinary, and that is just the only way to understand the impacts of the climate crisis on these vulnerable environments. struck me is that when, when you go through the sea ice, because at some point we had to go through the sea ice, and that is a that is just an, a, an adventure in its own right, because rather than gliding through the water, you're juddering through the ice the whole time. It's a very strange feeling. It's like sitting on, on a sort of vibrating plate the whole time. Um, but as you, as you go through the ice, the ice breaks up and you see this really brown slush underneath, and then you go, right, that's all the algae that I might have mentioned in lectures or something. This is where it all starts. It's, it's the start of that ecosystem, those, all those algae. And we always say, yeah, underneath the ice, there's lots of life and lots of algae. And there it is, you see it. And you think this is a barren landscape, but then you think, gosh, it, it isn't. It really isn't. Um, it supports so much life. But the, the walls of ice in front of you, it's, it's mesmerizing, but it also takes home the message, this cannot disappear into the sea because we'll have huge problems. Sometimes you come on the back deck and the tears are rolling out of your eyes because your environment is so beautiful. It's so pristine and it's so white and, and, and the sun was beaming on it and you, you just had to cry when you saw it. But then when, when the whole team was, on, was in, the, in the wet lab, as we call it, processing, those samples and people were singing and, and happy and helping each other. There was this different emotion almost. They said, wow, look at all these people here, you know, look at them all. They all have their story. They're all far away from home and they're all here for just one purpose. And, and it gives a very warm, a warm feeling, actually, whilst you're here in, in, in the Antarctic. Um, and that will stay with me, I think, the most. Yeah.